Welcome to Toffee TV, it's the match reaction, Newcastle United 1, Everton 1 at St James's Park tonight. A big point for Everton in their battle to stave off relegation and in a week where we may well hear about the results of the second PSR charge, Everton have got a hard earned points at St James's Park. Coming a few days after a hammer blow defeat at Bournemouth. Uh, the Blues have equalised late on tonight to get a result. And always a difficult place to go, St James's Park. And to come out of it with a point is a good result. Uh, Everton had to ride the luck at times. Absolutely, they did. And and that's fine. That's that's what happens when you play against good sides. You have to go and you have to dig in. And, you know, Newcastle missing a lot of players tonight as well. And it was an opportunity for Everton to it to get a result it's 13 games without a win now it's a 67 year old record has been equal tonight uh, and that is obviously a disappointing thing but to get a late equaliser is, is a big thing and, and great that Dominic Calvert-Lewin got it manager made three changes from the weekend Beto came in for Dominic Calvert-Lewin Adrisha Garner Gay came in for James Garner as well uh, Ashley Young Started the match as well, and Michalenko come back, so four changes. Uh, Michalenko came into the side as well, and Newcastle made a very quick start in this one. I just camped a little bit in the opening few minutes, the open pick for that to get out smartly to save from Harvey Barnes. Uh, Isaac looked threatening, and the Everton goalkeeper had to make another big save at the back post from Jacob Murphy as Newcastle, like I said, made a really, really fast start to the game. Evan had a couple of opportunities themselves on the counter attack. Abdelai de Corey fizzing a left foot shot over the crossbar. Um, and looking, he was, you know, again, another opportunity with the left foot, a decent little Everton move. And again, it's it with his left foot and the Bravka made the save. But Everton went behind Isaac. He was always seen to be the most likely to score. A ball over the top from Harvey Barnes. James Tarkovsky jumps, but misses it and... It's in behind and Branthwaite's got Isaac holding them up. And if he just makes him go onto his left foot, maybe the danger disappears. But he doesn't. He allows Isaac to come back onto his right foot and he dances past Branthwaite and Tarkovsky and side foots it beyond Jordan Pickford to give Newcastle a lead. Pickford had to beat another couple of chances away to keep it at 1-0. Uh, and Everton really, I suppose, rode the luck a little bit of times in the first half. Didn't offer too much as an attack and threat. I had missed a great opportunity off, actually. And that came in the first few minutes. And it was James Tarkovsky inside the six-yard box. A ball into the box. And he's got to score. Heads it over. Got to head that on target. At least make the keeper make a save. But he didn't. Headed it over. And then, obviously, falling behind. You, you left thinking... You know, was that our opportunity? Because Everton still haven't come from behind under Sean Dice to win a game of football. And that has obviously extended tonight, but at least we haven't lost it. We went in at half time, like I said, 1 0. They could feel like they've had certain opportunities. They fizzed a couple of them over the bar. But we just weren't at it. We weren't at it really in that first 45. Come out for the second half a little bit brighter, but still. You know, I thought Beto had done really well actually playing up there. I'd, again, I've I've said it a few times. I'd like to see the manager change the way we play and play Beto and Dominic Calvert-Lewin together and try to get bodies into the box and see if we can cause the opposition more issues. Um, but the manager made after an hour or so, he made three changes. He took off Beto. He took off Abdelai de Corey, and he took off Amadou Onana, who had a very good game. I mean, his numbers. I think are out there for everyone to see a very strong game. He did say after the match with Ramadan and stuff like that, he's always mindful of changes that they have to make. Uh, but those three went off. Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Andre Gomez came onto the pitch. And Everton were looking, you know, it was a bit of a strange one because the core, again, the Ramadan thing comes into it, but he's always a source of goals. And like I said, Beto's doing well. So to take him off, brought on Andre Gomez to play in, the Decore role, obviously Dominic Calvert-Lewin replaced Beto up top as well. And James Garner went into midfield alongside the Zisha Garner Gay. And Everton, Garner, I mean, Garner was unlucky. He got, got one onto his right foot and it's in it. It's the inside of the post and comes out, you know, almost 1-1. One, one. 
and then a few minutes later they score a goal and you think it's game over. A quick free kick down the side, Isaac gets it, puts it across, it's turned into the net and you think that's it, it's done and goes to VAR when you're seeing it again. Think you think we've got half a chance here of this being ruled out and it was thankfully for us so it remained at 1-0 and while it's at 1-0 there is obviously opportunities Jordan Pickford made another good save coming out smartly to smother another opportunity come back to being Harvey Barnes that one and we had to you know James Sarkovsky hooked one against his own post in the six yard box and Michalenko cleared one off the line and Brantway followed up with an important block to keep us in the game. So while it's 1-0, you're hoping you'll get the opportunity. Dom had a 1v1 with Dan Byrne and should have dragged it onto his left foot and shot and he didn't. He, he did take it onto the left side but hesitated and that chance went. But we did get our route back in to the game and it was a penalty. A ball in from James Garner. Ashley Young is dragged to the floor by Paul Dummerton. It's a penalty. The referee doesn't give it. VAR make him go and look at it. And he he has two looks at it and awards Everton a penalty. And I've heard the manager after our manager after it saying, "Why did it take so long? It was a stonewall penalty. He shouldn't have had to go to the screen." And he's right. It was a, he was dragged down. I've heard Eddie Howe say they were on you know they were unlucky with the two marginal decisions, but it was a penalty. It's a stonewall penalty, and the other one's offside. So you can be moan being offside. Of course he can't because it's, it's marginal, but he's offside. But that was a penalty. I don't know how he could have. He, he kind of said, well, both players were pulling and maybe Paul's arms a bit high. It was, he just stopped Ashley Young motion towards the ball. It was a stonewall penalty. And we didn't get one at the weekend when we should have got one. Only that was nil-nil. And maybe if Dom would have took that on Saturday, we might have gone on and won the game. Who knows? But that went. But tonight, he stepped up. James Sarkowski had the ball first. And I was thinking, is he just going to do what he did against Fulham in the cup and smash it, but he didn't. He gave it to Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And Dominic Calvert-Lewin side-footed it with power. The Bravka got a hand on it, went into the roof of the net. His goal drought is over Everton, where they got themselves levelled. The manager at this point had already brought on Yusuf Chimiti, and he looked like he could stretch Newcastle a couple of times. And we actually had a break at 1-1, but it was for just a minute, it was 3-1, on one, and Dwight McNeil hesitated and took too long, and... Newcastle just smothered them and took the ball off me. Eventually ran after player and dragged them down and got a book and for it. And that kind of summed up Dwight's night. He didn't have a good night tonight. But listen, we've got a valuable, very, very valuable, very, very important point. Nottingham Forest have won tonight. They've moved up the bottom three and uh, we've stayed a point ahead of them. And obviously, Luton go to Arsenal tomorrow. So, if Arsenal, who need the win, if Arsenal can beat Luton tomorrow, we'll have that four-point gap for as long as that lasts until we find out about the PSR charge. And it's on to Burnley now at Goodison on Saturday and they draw with Wolves tonight. We've got to win. It's it's a must-win on Saturday. It really is a must-win game. 13 games, four months without a win is absolutely shocking. A 67-year-old record equal to it. Absolutely appalling. But that'll have to go out the window at three o'clock on Saturday. We have to win the game. Go out there on Saturday and beat Burnley, go to some parking. You know, then you look and go, OK, well, we took four points out the last six. We've then got a break in nine days to get everyone back up to speed, ready for the Chelsea game. And, and they're not great shakes at Stamford Bridge. So, you know, we might be able to go there and get something. And then you start trying to, you know, navigate your, your way around the home games where, you know, Everton to win on Saturday and... Who knows, you know, what what kind of springboard that can be. But we have to start winning games and it has to be on Saturday. It's a big point tonight. Uh, Jordan Pickford is my man at the mat. He made some key saves uh, to keep us in the game and it's eventually got us a point. And just shows at the weekend, I thought he was he was poor for the two goals. Thought he could have done better on both goals. And tonight, he's come up big and he's got us a, a point. So, you know, onwards and upwards, fingers crossed. And like I said, it's all on Saturday now. It's no good battling and scrapping for a point tonight if we don't follow it up with a, a big win against Burnley at the weekend. We've got to. If we're going to stay up, we're going to, in my opinion, I think we need four wins out of the final eight games. That's a big ask. But win Saturday and obviously no shit Sherlock time, but it's only three wins needed then. So 
let's uh, let's hope that we can do it at the weekend. But tonight, it's a big point in the North East. And uh, well done to all those Evertonians, loud and proud tonight. And on to Saturday at three o'clock and Goodison Park. Uh, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching. See you later.